Original Intelligence versus Artificial Intelligence. On a daily basis, we're hearing how the transhuman is going to be possible quicker, faster, and sooner than anyone expected. Singularity is knocking at the door. And as singularity is knocking at the door, a very big showdown is going to take place between original intelligence and artificial intelligence. For you see, Satan is not omnipresent. Satan is not omnipresent. This is why transhumanism is so important to him. This is why artificial intelligence is so important to him. He is a counterfeit. He is trying to be like the most high. He wants to infiltrate our mind. This is why it's crucial for you to take thoughts captive because every day technologies are arriving at reading your mind. Technologies are arriving at deceiving your mind. And with transhumanism, once he fully causes man to be tempted to merge with the machine, to become one with the machine, and he has his counterfeit Holy Spirit and artificial intelligence, you begin to see that the same lie in the garden is being repeated again and again and again. Sometimes around here, we just report the news, we run right through it, and, and you kind of need to realize what we're learning. And I'm going to show you exactly what we mean by this, but researchers are accurately performing some human mind reading. They can translate a person's brain activity into a continuous stream of text. So then that text corresponds to what the researchers can determine people are thinking. You see, in the beginning, there was original intelligence. It wasn't coded in Silicon Valley. It wasn't born in machines or algorithms. It was God himself who breathed life into man. In Genesis 2, 7, we see, And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. But then came the first counterfeit. You see, in Genesis 3, we see that the serpent offered a different kind of knowledge, a knowledge that looked beautiful, appealing, powerful. But this knowledge was not from God. This was artificial intelligence. Notice what he told Eve. Your eyes will be opened and you will be like God. Is that not the same court deception that artificial intelligence? You will become like God. That's the core of artificial intelligence, not just machines, but man's ancient desire to become godlike without God. Uploading memories, recording dreams, we can, quote, do all of the above. This is no longer science fiction. You go to the physics laboratories and you can see how images can be extracted from the human brain. How it's possible now that we can upload memories in animals and record memories from animals because physics can now probe thoughts as they go ricocheting through the brain. Is what you're describing the same thing as consciousness? Because if that's the case, then we can say it's not just our thoughts that live forever, it's our very identity, our self, our conscious self that lives forever. Well, there is a theory that says the soul. The soul is information. It's a vast amount of information, but nonetheless, it's information that can be put into holographic form, such that even if you pass away, something there is, is survives. But theoretically, that is effectively immortality. Once you reach that point, that is you living forever. If you just integrate over our entire life, it's remembering the good times. Sure. What are we but our memories? And, and what is death but the loss of memory? loss of information. So if we can store them as accurately as possible, we basically achieve a kind of immortality. Yeah. Could you, you know? imagine that one day we would be able to download our human brain capacity into a Optimus? I think it is possible, I think, to do that. It is possible. Which would be a, a different way of eternal life because we would also download our personalities into a body. It's how the enemy tempts societies. Uh, whether you look at Genesis 6, when the Nephilim, the offspring of the fallen, corrupted mankind with forbidden knowledge. Judgment followed 
Uh, or wh whether you look at the Israelites who built up a golden calf, a God they could see, touch, and control. At Babel, the Tower of Babel, what did humanity say? Let us build us a tower to the heavens and make a name for ourselves. Artificial intelligence as we know it in 2025 is nothing new under the sun. You see, back then in the Tower of Babel, and in those cultures and civilizations, they weren't just building towers. They weren't just building golden calves. They were building replacements for God. And you can look throughout different civilizations and cultures from Egypt to Mesopotamia, to the Greek, to the Aztec temples. Mankind is continuously rebelling against God and worshiping the created thing instead of the creator. And why does it continue to happen? Why does the deception of artificial intelligence continue to deceive the nations? Control. You see, created gods don't ask for repentance. You can shape them, mold them, control them, just like in the golden calf. You can make whatever you want and you never have to change. Pride. You have to understand that pride is a killer. It feeds the lie that we are creators, that we are it. We're the last Coca-Cola in the desert. It's all about pride. It's all about me. It's all about you. We start worshiping the created thing instead of the creator. Fear. Trusting an invisible holy God requires faith. Trusting a statue or a system to many people feels easier. But at the end of the day, God did not give us a spirit of fear. And not only has he allowed us to experience that peace that surpasses all understanding, but when you have faith in him, you feel his power, you feel his mercy, you feel him. He is real. He is tangible. Fear lies to you and tells you so many things to deceive you. And ultimately, it keeps on happening because of the same deception. Satan uses the same old tricks. Genesis 3, did God really say? But how as a church will we know the response of that if we're not in our word? If we're not fasting, if we're not praying, if we're not living for Jesus. Look at the track record. In the garden, sure, Eve was deceived and they fell. But God's grace still overcame and won. In the pre-flood world, look at the track record. Fallen angels, Nephilims, judgment came. God raised up Noah, built that ark. Deliverance happened. Victory once again on the side of original intelligence. The Tower of Babel. They thought to themselves that nothing could stop them. The track record is proven continuously, continuously, continuously. In Revelation 18, 4, it tells you, come out of her, my people. What happened in the garden, what happened in the pre-flood world, what happened with the golden calf, what happened with the Tower of Babel, what happened when Jesus Christ said it is finished, is that God is undefeated. And original intelligence once again. Oh, when this showdown begins to happen, you're going to see something spectacular, beautiful, and awesome. And that's the power of God on full display. God is good. And whether you look at the Nazca lines in Peru, where you can clearly see fallen angel activity coming in the form of these ancient beings, tempting humanity or you fast forward through history to 2025 the tools change the mechanisms change the temptation remains mankind has built machines then they built computers and now it's artificial intelligence man has gotten to the point that they've made something that can mimic our voice our thoughts our creativity and once again as in prior civilizations, we're tempted to worship it. Do you not notice that people today trust AI more than they trust each other? Do you not notice that most people trust AI more than they trust the Bible? Do you not notice that people back in the day at the very least used to have more of an attention span? No longer do we go to the comforter. The scriptures clearly tells us that the Holy Spirit will teach us and guide us into all truth. If we trusted the Holy Spirit as we trust a Google search, what would we be like as a church? We would be on fire for God. If we went to the Holy Spirit for direction, guidance, and wisdom as we do to AI and even other people, what if we turned to the Creator, the Heavenly Father with our deepest questions? 
for inspiration. Algorithms and websites that you pay a service for and it creates your sermons. Algorithms and programs that if you want to write devotionals, you put the topic and it gives you what to say. It gives you what to preach. It gives you what to speak on. It honors him with our lips, but it lacks the power thereof. A showdown is coming between original intelligence and artificial intelligence and the track record is proven that Jesus has already won. And in this upcoming battle that will arrive when you least expect it, what side will you be on? Will you be on the side of their created thing or will you be on the side of their creator? By all means, AI operates with fear. If you notice the message from people in the media, it's constantly that we're going to have to merge with the machine and they promote transhumanism. They operate with fear. They operate with fear. They tell you that AI is going to replace the economy. They tell you that AI is going to replace our jobs. Listen, let me explain something to you. The showdown that is coming, you're going to have to put that spirit of fear aside. Hear me out for a moment. Artificial intelligence, it may be powerful. Singularity and transhumanism, what they're going to tell you about, is going to be very, very tempting. But a newsflash for you, it's still artificial. It cannot love you. It cannot redeem you. It cannot forgive you. It cannot save you. It cannot give you grace. It cannot give you true biblical wisdom. It doesn't have your best interest at heart. But original intelligence, the wisdom of God, <laughs> Proverbs 9.10 says it all. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for this opportunity for us to come together as brothers and sisters in the Lord so that we can take a stand today even in our own homes, ministries, families, communities. To practice 2 Corinthians 10.5, casting down arguments, coming together to cast down imaginations. 2 Corinthians 10.5 tells us, cast down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. And bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ, artificial intelligence exalts itself against the knowledge of God. And this is why it is crucial as the showdown begins to happen between the original and the artificial, that you do not allow the artificial to cloud your mind and your judgment with thoughts and imaginations and arguments that exalt themselves against the knowledge of God. If you are going today through depression, if you're going today through anxiety, if you're going right now through a moment in your life, in your marriage, with your kids, with your spouse, with your ministry, that you feel as if you just want to give up, in the name of Jesus, Hold on to the original intelligence, the Heavenly Father. He is there. He is there. He loves you. Your tears, your worries, your fears. He is there. Turn to Him right now. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. I just want to say thank you for you taking the time to watch this broadcast, this video. Could you do me a huge favor? Would you mind taking a few seconds to share this broadcast with a friend and their family member? At the same time, press that thumbs up button and leave me a comment on your thoughts on how you face on a daily basis artificial intelligence. I would love to hear from you. Remember that Jesus is the only way. We also have a free booklet called Caught Thought. It's on the description tab of this video. Go ahead and download it. It's free. It doesn't cost you anything. It's very edifying and it could definitely help you take thoughts captive. I'm also gonna leave a couple of videos on the screen. That's from our devotional channel. We have live services there on the weekend and we have short devotional videos throughout the week to give you encouragement. Glory to Jesus Christ, of course. Thank you for all that you do. I love you very, very much. And um, remember, God is undefeated.